Okay. Uh, another question, uh, did we do a movie poster in this class? Wasn't that the font? We had to use a, an example of like a movie or a TV show. I think that's what it was, wasn't it? Right, right. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I'm going to talk a little more about uh, designing movie posters today. And uh, we'll try to build something. Uh, and uh, let's see, I can find these files. Okay, so let me share my screen first. Okay, so uh, I just uh, Googled movie poster and uh, I'm looking at images and there's so many different movies. Every uh, week there's a new movie coming out and uh, designing movie posters uh, is uh, how my question to the class is how do you differentiate, uh, for example, a magazine ad from a movie poster? Movie posters tends to be more visual that has less words. Okay. Very good. What else? An ad has an object to, to show off, to sell. Okay. It can, it can be a movie ad too. Um, the movie ads usually uh, reference the story in some way and have the characters that are vital to the story. Exactly. What else? Okay, um, I just uh, randomly picked uh, this ad of Bumblebee. And let me just open this image in Photoshop so that I just copy it from here. Okay, so uh, if we just look at this poster, uh, what are the different things we, we are looking at? So what do we have here? Oh, Cliff. The Autobot sign literally behind the main characters. Okay. What is this? What are you pointing at? Mm. Oh, I see it, San Francisco Bridge. Okay, San Francisco Bridge. And what, what is here in yellow? Uh, 
name of the movie? Yeah, Bumblebee, the name. Uh, so that is the name of the movie. Uh, then there is every hero has a beginning. So what is that? So there's a title. A headline. Maybe a headline or a uh, you know slogan or uh, anything uh, you know relating to that video. What do we have down here? See if I can zoom in. Oops. So what is down here? Maybe these are what credits? Yeah, the production credits. Yeah. So again, production credits. Uh, uh, Paramount Pictures. Uh, you know. Uh, it can be uh, the main actors or producers, so and so, and uh, there might be some uh, icons over here representing some technologies. Uh, for example, you know, sometimes they have uh, Dolby surround system or a technicolor or you know those type of things or any other companies that help the production uh, paramount pictures logo is over here so you know so these are mostly credits down there all right so let's talk a little bit about movie posters so i'm just going to work on a presentation with you guys over here and all right so in order to design a movie poster okay so there are a few things we need to keep in mind okay first of all you need to have a goal okay whether you are designing for a client or creating a poster series to sell the poster design must convey both information and the aesthetics to your audience okay so let's uh, talk about focus over here so behind a good movie poster should be a good theme or an idea it must communicate attract and reach reach out to the target audience Okay, so, so what is your focus? Okay, so that is important. And uh, the focus will come from the story itself. So whatever the theme of the movie is, whatever the main idea of the movie is. Okay, so that's going to uh, suggest what will be the focus of that particular poster. You'll be looking at impact. So make an impact with minimalist approach, fewer distractions and lasting impressions. So something uh, which your audience can take away from that. Okay, something they can remember, something which is memorable. Consistent, okay. Be consistent with your design choices and font selection, specifically if you are working on a series of posters. Okay, so if you're working on a series of posters, so if it's the same movie, uh, so one poster should not look very different. So it should represent that particular movie itself. So use, uh, Contrasting fonts and colors to convey hierarchy of the message. We talked a little bit about the hierarchy. And uh, so, for example, when we were, uh, we were working with uh, typography, we talked about the hierarchy of uh, a type. So, headline, uh, subheads, 
the body text, uh, things like that. So, so in order to convey information, so the hierarchy is important. The title of the movie is very important. Okay, so that is the main uh, highlight. And then there are some subheadings, and so that's how you can establish the hierarchy. So what comes first? What needs to be emphasized? So your design choices should, should be consistent with the symbolism of the movie. It's your job to balance uh, artistic uh, interpretation of your subject with authentic representation. And then of course, uh, you have to be factual. So use the main image that reflects a clear inspiration point of interesting and factual details in the movie. Include actual screenshots, props, and accessories from the film. Include elements that may touch and simulate movie fans' knowledge. As, as uh, and interests. So, so you know, you you can't uh, just uh, create a movie poster from you know from your own mind. So it should represent the movie itself because that's the product. That's the product you are selling. So you have to be factual about that. Uh, you need to look at the composition designer. Visually balanced layout with images and type that is easy on the eyes and easy to understand. So over here, uh, let me ask that question once again, guys. How do you differentiate between different type of media? So once again, uh, there is a, let's say there is a book cover. There can be a magazine cover. There can be a magazine ad. There can be a poster to sell a product. Uh, then there is a movie poster. So these are all different uh, things which are designed, but how do you differentiate? So when, uh, let's say if you are looking at this alien poster, which is right here, when you're looking at it, can you, uh, so if you look at it right away, you can say, hey, this is a movie poster. So what makes a movie poster a movie poster? So that is a very open question to you guys. So if I can, yeah. So Andre is going to say something. Oh yeah, um, I feel like, I don't know, in other posters, they don't have as much information like outline, like in movies, like the production and all that, but I don't know. Uh, if you can kindly be a little bit louder. Oh no, I was just saying that, um, that like usually in like book covers and stuff, it doesn't have like that much information on it like uh, like the production stuff at the bottom. Right. So, so that is one of the dis distinctions of a movie poster where we, we are adding some production information or credits or uh, things like that. Now, uh, visually, when you're designing, a, uh, let's say if you are designing a poster for for an for an event, okay. So uh, let's say that it's going to be uh, a school event, and you are designing a poster. Okay, so you also need to uh, create a magazine ad for that. Okay, so with in magazine ad, you can put more details. Why? Because if uh, if an ad is in a in a magazine, the 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 audience or the reader will be like uh, maybe like uh, one foot away while reading the magazine. Okay, so they are close to the magazine. 
They might be sitting somewhere. Uh, they have more time to read more information. So when it comes to a movie poster, movie posters are displayed on, on the walls, uh, maybe somewhere uh, in, a, uh, in, uh, on, in air, uh, you know, air, airport or, uh, or a train station or on a bus stand or, or even in a movie theater. Okay. So, so these are big posters. Uh, but you're not looking at them from one feet away, two feet away. So you're looking at them from at least 10 to 15 feet away. So from that distance, uh, it should still be able to con convey the information. Okay. Uh, so typography, explore new fonts. Make font, mix fonts with the fonts to illustrate uh, contrast of the hierarchy of information, be playful without uh, ditching from the main idea. Now, one thing I didn't cover in this slide, uh, this is an older presentation, somehow it skipped a couple of slides over here. Uh, the title of the movie, how you design it is important because that is something uh, which represents the branding of that movie. Okay, that is something which, uh, which will be memorable. Okay. So when you are designing uh, the title, it becomes like the logo of that movie. So which you can remember from you know, years to come. So if I see even going back to really old movies like, uh, for example, Ben-Hur, okay. So in, so Ben-Hur from 1950s, uh, how they designed the title, if I see that font or style somewhere, so, so even though, uh, you know, uh, it, it might not be a Ben-Hur poster, but just looking at that style, I can say, hey, you know what? Uh, this is, this looks like the Ben-Hur. So that movie comes in your mind, or uh, this is the Matrix style, or uh, this is, uh, uh, for example, that TV show Stranger Things. So they have a very particular title. Uh, there, there is another. Uh, well, there are a lot of different examples over here, so I need to move forward on this. Okay, so. Draw your composition ideas based on the theme and content of the movie. Okay. Now in the end, <clears throat> this is a question. Is movie poster an art? So we need to keep in mind that uh, your movie poster is not an art aesthetic piece of art to look cool on living room wall, but it's a way to catch the eye and tempt the mind. They are designed to sell the tickets. So that is the main goal of your movie poster. Number one, to attract people. Number two, uh, Give them enough information that it's a movie. Okay. You can put uh, you know, uh, the dates, for example, if the movie is not out yet. So, uh, so you can say, you know, uh, coming soon or uh, you know, let's say May 16 and so on and so. So, but the main reason why you are creating the poster is to sell the tickets. The second reason can be that if we look at the poster, so that leaves something in your mind. And if you see something uh, in that regards uh, somewhere else, so you could still uh, you know, uh, remember that. Okay, I think my slides are shuffled over here. So it went to the old. 
slide it should have been first so this is where i was talking about the title okay the title should convey the genre and subject in a glance use fonts or colors that help the title to pop out and make it readable in a glance so remember this poster you'll be looking at from a distance okay so right away it should have an impact now there is another uh, uh, media and that is uh, not a big poster but a billboard so billboard you are going to design in a different way billboards uh, now this movie poster you are still about 10 15 feet away so you 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 can still put some details over there uh, but on a billboard maybe the billboard is on the side of a freeway so when you are driving uh, so you just have few seconds to look at the billboard and uh, get the message so just remember whatever you are designing the goals may be very different okay so evoke the very essence uh, don't uh, feature your actors like they are movie stars unless they are really movie stars evoke the very essence of your story no one cares who is in in your film unless they are recognizable so sometimes you don't even have to put pictures okay in order to get the idea across okay so i'm going backwards now be bold uh, go for a single strong clear generic image that somehow conveys the central idea conflict or problem Okay, so that is also important. So, which image you are going to use? So, you may have to find an image from within uh, within the movie, which uh, with which people can uh, get the gist of what this movie is all about. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, depending upon the movie itself. So sometimes uh, too many colors may be distracting. Okay. So, so this is more like in a general term, not in the movie poster term. But uh, most post posters work best when drawn from a few colors, creating a bold and eye-catching image. Now, talking about colors, uh, every movie, if you notice that. uh it has its own color palette it has its own color theme going so for example if uh, there was a movie cat in the hat so once the cat uh, the movie opens uh, you you are uh, you are drawn into a certain color environment and throughout the movie the colors are consistent okay so those uh, those colors also become part of the branding of the movie so make sure that uh, uh, you are also consistent with the colors of that particular movie okay so in the end uh, this is just a tip for the designers that keep your psd files layered what is psd that is photoshop document okay so do not flatten your layers depends upon photoshop it can you know whatever photoshop if you are using photoshop illustrator or any software when you are working with layers layers uh, will give you control over your artwork uh, if uh, this is a good example over here is the same movie but if there was a let's say spanish version coming out okay so so rather than uh, recreating that poster if you have your original photoshop or illustrator files you can go in and just uh, make a change on one of the file uh, layers and you are done okay thank you all right so uh 
So while your final files may be huge, don't be tempted to flatten them in, in Photoshop. Keep them multi-layered so other people can work on your artwork later. So if you, if you work in, in a team, so, so that also helps your team members to open the file and if they have to make any changes, they can make those changes. Uh, maybe replace the title or different language uh, versions, et cetera, et cetera. So keeping your, uh, uh, keeping your uh, application files, they can be Photoshop, they can be Illustrator, they can be any software, is very important for any designer. Uh, I, I always say that it is just like, you know, in traditional photography, uh, the photographers used to keep the negative. So if, if they, uh, sh uh, they shot a, uh, let's say, a, a scene for you or your portrait, okay, so they don't give you the negatives. Okay, they always keep it. So they have control over if you want reprints. So same goes over here. So as a designer, you may want to keep uh, your application files with layers intact so that uh, you, know, you, can, uh, you can keep that control and if uh, your client wants any changes or if they want to uh, recreate something in a poster or any changes they want, so they, they need to come to you rather than going to somebody else. Okay, uh, so this was a little bit about movie poster and we are going to make a poster uh, in a second, but uh, I'm going to take a break guys at this point and uh, about a five minute break. So I can break my fast at this time and then uh, come back and help you.
All right, guys, I'm back. Let's... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have a folder. Uh, this is, uh, you're familiar with the movie Blade Runner. The new one? <laughs> or the I'm old? Not, no, I'm talking about the old one. I haven't seen the new one yet. It's pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, so, uh, so what, uh, uh, why is Blade Runner so famous? What makes Blade Runner? Didn't the production team have a lot of time to work on the project because of a strike, I believe? Okay, uh, no, I'm talking about the old version, the old movie. Is that not the old version? So no, uh, there is uh, something very particular, uh, or because this this movie is known to be uh, one of the early, uh, uh, you know, futuristic science fiction. So you know, there are a lot of movies that came after that on this subject, but this was like one of the first movies in, on this type of a subject. Okay, so anyway, uh, uh, this is uh, a poster. I don't think it's an original poster. Uh, this is some fan art uh, from, you know, somebody did this, uh, I think I found it somewhere on the internet. So, but let's look at this poster and we will be creating our own version of Blade Runner. So I have, I was looking at this image. Okay, so this is one of the characters in there. Okay, and then uh, I also found uh, this scene. Uh, which I thought was very interesting. So maybe I can use that uh, as, a, as the background of my poster. Okay, and uh, let's see. What do we see over here? There is Pan Am. There is Hilton. Uh, so Pan Am uh, does not exist, so it can't go in the future. Uh, Atari, okay. So some familiar uh, brands. But anyway, so let's look at some other imagery. Okay. Harrison Ford, main character. And of course the, the title or I should say the logo of the movie. Okay, so these are a couple of uh, images and then uh, previously in uh, previous semesters, so this is one of the versions which we did in the class. Okay, so if we look at this, there's that main character, uh, there is the logo okay uh, since the name blade runner is there so so you know we we were talking about hey you know what uh, we should create some shapes in there which are sharp but we made the shapes a little more fancy and uh, so these are the shapes and uh, we uh, so this is like, you know, uh, these are the units uh, which have been uh, 
maybe rotated or, uh, you know, but if you notice that they have been placed in columns and rows in order to create some balance in the, in the artwork. And then of course there is this background uh, and it is the same background scene. You can see that, you know, there's a little bit of that Atari sign showing up over here. All right, so, so we'll try to create something like this. Uh, for this, I'm going to use two different software packages. One is going to be, of course, Photoshop. And then, uh, and in order to do these shapes, I'm going to use Illustrator. Okay, so let's do this. First of all, we need to know how big the poster is going to be. So I'm going to design it in Photoshop to start with. Okay, so in Photoshop, I'm going to say file and new. And the size of the poster is going to be if I could go to US per paper, and from here I can choose tabloid size. Okay, so it's going to be a tabloid size. The width is going to be 11 inches, height is going to be 17 inches. Uh, resolution, I'm going to uh, make it half of 300, that is 150 pixels per inch. It's going to be an RGB. So starting with the RGB colors, 8-bit should be fine for this project. Okay, starting with white background, that is fine. And color profile, uh, not going to worry about this for right now. Color profiles, uh, sometimes you may have to choose a color profile if you're, uh, especially if you're working for uh, a print project. And uh, if there is a print shop that works with a particular color pal palette or color profile, you may want to use that at that time, but that is the advanced thing. Anyway, so let's just uh, name it, just call it Blade Runner. And I'll just create a new document. Okay, so now if you notice that this is uh, not a landscape, it, it is more like a portrait orientation over here. All right, so I think it will be a good idea if I start with the background image. And I was looking at this image to be used for the background, I can just drag it in. Okay. Now, when you drag in any image, rather than opening it or uh, placing it, so it comes with this bounding box. Okay. So that means that at this point, I can move it around. I can scale it. Okay. Easily. I can scale this poster. So I, I want to, this to fill the image completely. So I'm going to zoom out so that I get some room to work with this. And just put this in the center, press the option key down and then scale. Okay. So if my poster was hor uh, more horizontal landscape, uh, then I can fit more of this image. But at this time, uh, my orientation, I can't fit anything. So I, I will have to make that compromise. So I can't show everything in there. So at this point, you can just uh, scroll and see you know which part of the scene you want to use. I like this uh, better right now because I like this little uh, vehicle or sort of a taxi spaceship, whatever you want to call it. Okay. 
if I scroll over here, so these lights are interesting, but I think uh, this looks good so far. Okay, so what we are doing here is, you know, as uh, we are placing our images, we are also making decisions. Okay, so, so how to compose the poster. Now this is looking good, uh, but, but if you look at the background image itself, so it is very busy, okay. And in order to create something over here, uh, so we'll have to, uh, you know, make some decisions. So if you are bringing more images, we don't want the poster to be so busy that it takes away from the theme and the main idea of the movie itself. Okay, so another thing I want to do here is I want to divide. So anyone remembers how to put guides to Photoshop? And then on view, view guide. Yeah, view and then yeah, new guide. New guide layout. Okay. So you can create a new guide. If you have to create a guide, you can also pull out a guide from your rulers. Okay. So that should be fine. Uh, sometimes when you're working and you know, like if I put my uh, Photoshop interface like this, now I don't have access to the vertical ruler and I I can pull a guide from a horizontal ruler, but if I press my option key, I can make it vertical. Okay, so so this, this is about the guides. But over here, I can I want to use another feature in Photoshop that is new guide layout. Okay. So with a new guide layout, so you get this dialog box in which you can divide your page. So I will, actually I want four columns and uh, number of rows, I want the number of rows to also be, let's say, make it five, okay. I already have some margins going on. Uh, so the top margin is 150 pixels and so, so I'm going to keep that 150 pixels on top. So I want to give a little more space over here. Uh, you can put some gutter spaces between. So I've got 20 pixel gutter space uh, in columns. I can also put 20 pixels in the rows. So that is give, going to give me a little bit of space. So if I'm, I'm will be putting imagery in these, uh, in these sections, so, you know, they are not touching each other. So anyway, so let's just say okay to this. <clears throat> All right, uh, now, before I bring any other images in here, Let's work on those shapes in Illustrator. So in Adobe Illustrator, so it, let, I'll just create a new document here. Okay, and I will be creating New document tablet size and also port, uh, portrait orientation and then just create. Okay, so we can work with any shapes. Just going to create a rectangle over here just for a little bit of interest, I'm just going to give it a color. Let's just use this green. OK. 
Okay, so if I make an ellipse over here or a circle, let's put that circle over here. One thing I'm noticing is that I have my stroke still on. So I can just select both these shapes and make sure to take out the stroke. So that means no color. So now we have this particular object. All right, so these are two different objects, although the same color. So if I just change the color of this uh, circle so you can see that they are two different objects. Another object I want to create over here is make another circle about, let's just put this over here. Okay. Go to select everything. Go to the shape builder tool and say that I want these shapes to be subtracted from my uh, uh, rectangle over here. So I'll press the option key down and then click and drag. And when I release my mouse, so those areas will be subtracted. And if, in order to add, I can just simply click and drag without the option key. I can just click, drag and add those to the shape. Okay. Now, if you notice that when I'm doing this, the the color from the shape which was on top will be filled with the in in the news a new shape anyway so i'll just work with this uh, i could have created one more shape but this is fine okay so i want to create different orientations of the same shape. So I'm just going to move it this way. And then maybe rotate it uh, clockwise like this. Option, drag. Maybe rotate it this way. Can select everything over here, option drag. Okay. Now they, they can be more uniform over here, but I want to still make some changes. So probably uh, select this guy and go and find the tool. There's a rotation tool, but there's another tool which is reflect tool. Double click on the tool itself and I'm going to reflect it vertically. You can also preview it over here. Okay, same thing with this. I'm going to double, uh, double click the reflect tool and this time I'm going to flip it horizontal. Okay, and Let's also try putting in an angle over here. So I'm going to put 90 degrees. Flip vertical. Okay, this looks good. Okay, so uh, you got the idea. So what I'm trying to create over here is uh, uh, some sort of a system, okay, but, uh, but in order to create that system, I'm using one shape, and one shape becomes as the unit form. So that unit form can be replicated, it can be changed, it can be flipped, it can be rotated, it can be uh, even, uh, you can work with sizes, or you can scale it if you want, but in this case, I'm not going to scale them, this is fine. But keeping in mind that when we were making those columns, okay, so we did uh, uh, four columns and five rows over here. But uh, if we say four by one, two, three, four, so 
keeping that in mind, so I need about uh, four, uh, I mean, four rows and four columns. So I'm missing one column over here. So I'm thinking how to do this. Maybe I'll just select these guys, bring them here. Maybe rotate this guy. And maybe also flip it. Trying to move really fast over here. Okay, so this is fine. I might want to compact this a little bit, so I'm using my arrow keys in order to bring things a little closer. This guy. So I need to move fast. I don't want to bore you guys because sometimes I take a long time just to decide, you know, how the shapes are going to fit. I can just reflect the whole thing over here, double click, horizontal, this should be fine. Okay, so we had a unit form, we created some sort of a pattern with this, uh, keeping in mind those four columns and four rows. Uh, select everything from here, I'm going to copy this, go back to Photoshop, and I'm going to paste. You can paste it uh, as pixels or as a smart object or just paths or shape layers. So in this case, uh, pixels or smart objects should be fine. So I'll just use the smart object option over here. Okay, so now this thing comes in. I'm going to scale it to leave some margins. And the idea is to have them kind of fit in a little bit in this area. Okay. I think this should be fine. Uh, I can leave this uh, area for the title. Okay, so, so let's bring one more image in here. So this time I'm going to bring this image. Okay, so this image is once again sitting on the top. I'm going to scale it. Okay, so I'm going to place this image, but uh, you know, at this time, if you notice that it is covering up the the shape pattern which I've created. So for that, for I'm going to go to my layers panel and just reduce the opacity of this image a little bit so that I could see where I'm going to place this. Okay, so I think the eye of the character is looking interesting, so I need to bring the eye in the area where it can be emphasized. Okay, so maybe both eyes, but I think uh, just one will be okay. All right, so going back to the layers and making the opacity back to 100%. Now I want this image to fill 
the shapes over here. So who remembers how to do that? Help, help, help. How to uh, create a clipping path? Uh, well, then it, you hold Option and then click so click on the on the layer. Yeah, Option and click between the layers. Okay. Right. okay. So when you are on the layer, you can see my cur cursor is a sort of a pointing finger. But if I bring my cursor between these two layers, I get a cursor with an arrow pointing down. That means that the top layer is going to be clipped into the layer below it, like this. Okay. Now, as I'm looking at this image, I just turned off the grid. Now, it is very busy. Okay, I need to do something to the background because this image itself is interesting. So let's turn off these layers, tackle the background itself. Okay, so see what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a copy of this layer, Command J. Okay, Command J after selecting this layer, makes a copy. And I'm going to invert the colors. Okay, so that means uh, just like uh, a negative. Okay, so how do I invert? Command I to invert the colors. Okay, so that is one thing. Another thing I'm going to do is go to the blending modes of your layers. And from here, you can see, you can try different blending modes over here. So from here, I'm going to choose a color mode called color dodge. Okay, so at this time, what color dodge does is, since it was a negative, it is just dodging out all the colors, almost all the colors over here. And it is leaving these little faded lines. Okay, so that is fine. Another thing I'm going to do is, if I, now this is exactly the same image, but it was reversed in this layer. So if I change or add a filter like radial blur, so I can just go with here at the blur and choose Gaussian blur this time, I think. So when I do this, so you see, I get a really nice effect. It looks like, you know, uh, like a, a color pe pencil drawing rather than the photograph. Uh, I can adjust the radius okay, of the blur and see how much of uh, the effect I need. Okay, so if I go smaller, okay, so less details, if I go a little higher, so I get a little more details over here. So if I go all the way to the maximum, so this is the kind of result I'm getting. This, this is an interesting uh, effect in itself. But I like that little bit of a pencil or a line art type effect. Okay. So now, if I turn on these layers, now you can see that the image uh, is more visible. Now, if you want these shapes by themselves to be 
little more highlighted or to be in more 3D uh, environment. So what you can do is to go back to this uh, vector shape layer, which is uh, those green uh, shapes over there. And I can add an effect. I can add drop shadow. Okay, so I can control the drop shadow over here. Probably the size is a little too big. Decrease the distance a little bit, just a little too much. Okay, one thing good about uh, drop shadow is that you can also bring your cursor within your document. And then you can actually move the shadow wherever you want. Okay, so that is interesting. Okay, um, let's bring the logo in here and see if it will look good over here or not. Okay, so Blade Runner logo. It's a PNG file. Looks like. Yeah. All right, so see what happened over here. I had that vector smart object layer selected. Okay. And when I brought the uh, a new uh, image in there, it will come above that. This, this was not what I wanted. Okay, so I want this to be not part of that clipping group, so I'm going to move it up. But as soon as I do this, so I lost my clipping. So I'll go back with the option key and clip that image back and go to the logo layer now and bring this over here. If you lock the clipping art, will it still do that? Like the layer, if you lock the layer? If you lock the layer, yeah. uh, it will still do that because you are bringing a new layer in there. So it's not uh, changing that layer, but it is just adding a new layer. So it will still do that. Okay, so uh, I think the background is a little too light now. So I can go back to this particular layer and maybe reduce the opacity a little bit so I can dial it down to where I think it will look nicer. Okay, now this is fine. Uh, now Blade Runner logo itself, I think I might want to make it white. Okay, so there are a couple of ways to do this. I'll go to that layer. Remember, you'll go to the layer where you want to make changes. Uh, the easiest way will be, since it's black, so if I invert the colors, Command I to invert, it's going to select the opposite colors. So in this case, the opposite of black will be white. Okay. So it works pretty good over here. If that logo had a color to it, so maybe the logo was red. And in that case, if I invert, so it's going to go and find the opposite color of red in the RGB color wheel. So that is, uh, you know, that is not what, uh, if we want to make it white, then we will have to do the hue saturation and take this, uh, brightness slider all the way to the left to make it white. So that that is the second way of doing that. Okay, anyway. So we are going to invert. Okay. 
I think I might have to make this a little bit larger. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is uh, taking the Blade Runner and making this little larger. So I'm getting a warning over here. It says smart filter applied to the layer will be turned off temporarily while they transform. So let's say, okay, please do it. Okay. Now you can scale it. And once you finalize it, it will turn back. So sometimes it, you know, when they added this feature the first time, so, so I was confused when I was doing something like this. So, you know, if, if the colors are already inverted and now you're trying to transform it, command T, <clears throat> and the colors are going back. I said, what is happening? But again, this is the original, okay? Whatever you're doing is being added as a smart uh, filter on top of it. So when I hit returns, I will commit to that and it will go back to <clears throat> the normal. Okay, um, so far so good. If we want to add another image in there, um, I think I have one Harrison Ford image. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I can just drag it in. Okay, I'm not sure where I'm going to place it yet. I'm going to reduce the opacity so that I can see a little bit behind. Maybe if I bring him over here and see how that looks. Okay. <clears throat> Let's work with this. I'm going to hit the return key, take the opacity back to 100%, and I am going to bring this right above the image of that uh, character, lady, and then option click between the layers to add this to the clipping group. Okay, so this is fine. Now, if I have to make any adjustments, I can. So I can take my move tool and move him where I think it should be looking okay. All right, so now I don't like these sharp lines over here. So these are messing up, messing up with us. So in this case, this is going to be an easy fix where I can make a selection of the area which I want to keep and then click on the layer mask to hide anything which was outside my selection. Okay. I want to try doing one more thing over here. So I want to add, not in the clipping group, but overall, I'll go to the top layer. And over here, I'm going to add a new layer and go and find a color let's say because i want to make uh, the colors over here cool down a little bit so maybe i'll just choose this blue okay so i've chosen the color it is uh, in my background colors I can brought, brought it to foreground and option delete to fill that new layer with that color. And now I can overlay these colors to the layers below it. So I can change the blending mode. 
Uh, I can darken it, I can multiply, I can, you know, I can just scroll through these different blending modes. So this is the overlay. Okay. So you're, if you're not familiar with these uh, blending modes, so you just play with them, they are very powerful. Okay. And uh, I think either soft light or overlay is something which I like. So this should be it. Okay, one last word over here. Now, in order to make this look like a movie poster, okay, I might have to add some credits down here. Okay, so for, to add credits, let's see if we can go and find Because at this time, I don't want to type in the information because I don't have the information with me. So in that case, you know, if you're doing it for a client and uh, if you don't have some information, you can create lorem ipsum text. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can already have any credits pre-made. So I can go to the internet, Google. Movie poster credits. Okay, so now if you notice that uh, I can search for movie movie poster credits or movie poster credit font. Okay, uh, there's also a PNG file. So font, I will uh, I can go and download a font. Uh, I think there is a movie poster FX font, which is free, which is a pretty good font. So you may want to try that. But in this case, I, I'm just going to save time and say movie poster credit PNG file. Okay, so there are a number of those over here. Let's go to the images and see if there is any credits which I can use temporarily to make it look like a movie poster. How about this guy over here? Okay. So I can just take this image and drag it into my movie poster. Okay, so this is what I call as the fake PNG because uh, they gave that uh, checkered background to make it look like a PNG, but it's not a true PNG because I think they may want you to buy this. Okay, that's fine, but we can. I think I can get rid of that checkered background. Can anyone help me with that? So what can be a best way of removing that checkered background? Help, help. Cutting it out. Okay, what else? invert the text so this is what will happen if i invert oh. okay so this is what i'm going to do image adjustments levels remember these levels remember we talked about the histogram so this side represents the darker pixels. This side represents the lighter pixels. This is the mid-tone area. But if you notice that there are also these three eyedropper tools. This repre represents the 100% black or dark areas in the image. This represents 100% white, and this is 50% gray. So I'm going to take this white slider, I have an eyedropper, and go and find this 
light gray pixels in there and then just click on it okay so so that means that i have forced this image to have those gray pixels turn into white so they are not totally turned light so if i click on the gray so gray pixels are gone okay so that gives me an ability to if i use multiply now the layers blending modes get rid of the white okay Could bring them down here okay so this is good uh, but once again the problem is that removing white and having those uh, dark pixels okay blending with the background over here so they are getting lost so what can be the solution now one of the solutions can be if i i can add lighter colors down here so i can create a new layer just below the credits and in this new layer i can select white and choose the blend tool and my blend is going from white to transparent i think but i want to do a linear so i can just create a blend okay so so this was one solution but again you know now the white is uh, getting more towards the logo itself maybe i can readjust the logo and see if that helps but it is uh, changing the overall balance of what i want um, another solution will be if i take uh, all the images as well as the vector pattern and the logo itself and we still have some space over here so we can move about half an inch up there so how can we do this so we are not going to uh, affect the background just going to select shift select all the layers which i want to include and then i can move them up Okay, another solution can be coming back over here. These credits, if I change them back to Command I and then invert them and the blend itself command i okay so so this is not going to work because see if i can instead of using multiply if i use screen so this screen is going to work better over here okay. and this can be made a little darker so command u and make this lightness darker on that blend layer 
Okay, so so see, uh, you know, we we had these uh, three, four images, and uh, so you know, we were when we were working on this project. So we are we are making decisions as we go along. So I have done it like second time now, uh, but again, you know, uh, this time we did it a little differently. Hopefully that was helpful. Now, for you guys, uh, this uh, poster project is optional, okay? Uh, this will be for extra credit, so if you have time, I know because of the COVID uh, virus, which is out there, so we are sitting at home, so we may have a little more time so for that, an extra credit assignment for you guys, okay. So play with this, uh, you can choose any movie and try to create your own version of that poster, okay. So this can become as uh, one of your portfolio pieces. Now this is not the real, these are not the real credits over here. If you want to uh, create your own credits, that is fine. I will recommend if you can go and find movie credit fonts. Okay. And yeah, uh, this is the font I was talking about, SF movie poster font. Okay, let's just click over here. Now this is the font you can download. It's a free font. And uh, I've seen that this works really well. It also comes with a template itself where you can go and just change the names and stuff like that okay all right guys so um what do you think so far oh it's a it's, it's definitely something new it's different and uh it, it gives you more more options now to use that uh, blend. Right. right, so again, the whole idea is to, you know, give you uh, some more uh, ways to look at what we have been lear learning. Uh, remember, uh, when you will be working in the industry, at that time, your clients are not going to come with a tutorial in their hand and say, hey, you know, can you do this for me? So in that case, you will be making decisions. And that's the beauty of uh, this field is that uh, there is always, uh, you know, room for creativity. Uh, there is never the same answer to the same problem. But again, uh, you know, there's a lot of research involved. There's a lot of uh, experimentations involved. Uh, and uh, that's the fun of it. So you can never get bored. Okay. So <clears throat> more you are going to use these tools, uh, better understanding you will have, you will start feeling comfortable with these. Uh, so I would highly encourage uh, going online, watching uh, uh, tutorials uh, from different instructors because every instructor have their own way of working. They have their own style of working. Uh, they have their own favorite tools they work with and how they work with those tools. Uh, so, so more you are going to uh, get, ex get yourself exposed to uh, how you work with these uh, uh, 
software packages and tools, so the better you will get. And uh, don't try to um, learn things in a hurry. Uh, just take it easy, just enjoy uh, you, you know what what you're interested in and uh, i think the best time to learn is that you know if you want to do something and you don't know and you just go and try to figure out if you can't figure out you go and find out at that time so if anyone wants to become an expert in photoshop they can just grab photoshop manual which is like hundreds of pages. They can read it from A to Z, but they're not going to learn anything unless you are doing it. Okay, so more you are going to work with the software packages, better you, you will get. All right, guys, so uh, I'm going to stop lecturing now. I'm open to any questions. How many more weeks do we have? Okay, so our last uh, day of the semester is this, I think it's 22nd. So, so we are here. Cinco de Mayo, happy Cinco de Mayo. And Friday the 22nd is the last day of the semester. Uh, our class, uh, last day for our class is going to be 21st, same time. Okay. And so that is Thursday. So one, two, three, and four more classes before our final. Okay. So this is what uh, we should be doing next uh, next meeting. So that is on the seventh. Number one, I want you guys to come up with some questions. So anything you may want me to do again, anything you want me to explain, okay? So please uh, come up with some questions, okay? The second thing I want to do is, we are going to decide what our final project is going to be. So this is where we will be deciding. So, so in other words, uh, Whatever you have so far on your plate, so you know, you know, make sure that you are doing your work, and uh, and then uh, I I still haven't decided what the final project is, so I I'm going to decide it with you guys, okay. And the final project will be presented on the twenty first. Okay. So, so that, would, that whole week then, uh, the 7th to 21 to finish it, that project. Right, right. I'll make sure I'll give you a project which you, you will be able to finish within a week. It's time. So that means you will have one, two. Yeah. So you will have if you even count the weekends in there, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve days before the final. <laughs> Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see. Um, So more than half the class is not here today. Um, would you be able to send me the pen tool master exercise? It, I, I lost it. It's 
Sure. I just need to get it so I can redo it. Sure. Uh, you know what I'll do is I'll put it in the assets folder in, okay. in the on the Google Drive. I think that will be the best. So if anyone else needs that too, so so they can access that. So okay. Let me write it down before I forget. And can you really fast remind me what we're supposed to do for the composite assignment? Uh, the composite assignment, which we did uh, in the beginning. I, the, uh, I don't think so. Let me check. I, mm I think it was a composite of five images in Photoshop. Is that the one we are talking about? Oh, okay. Never mind. I, I did that one. Right. I was trying to figure that out. What did did we just have to make a dolphin for the dolphin project? No, no, no. The dolphin was part of the pen tool exercises. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So all you had to do was just trace it all around and just uh once you close the path, you can fill that with a color. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that was just a pen to the assignment. Mm -hmm. So it was more like practice with pen tools. Right. So, uh, so let's do this, guys. So, uh, uh, any questions you have, uh, just write it down. Uh, Thursday, ask me all the questions. And then we'll just uh, decide on the final project. And then from that point onward, so we should be focusing on the final. And uh, if, you, if you notice that uh, there were no due dates, very strict due dates on the projects uh, this semester. Uh, so that is okay. As long as you know, I can get your files in your folders, make sure that you, sh you are turning in your work um, so there are few students uh, i've seen that you know i have i have nothing in the folder yet so i'm still waiting so make sure that you are turning in your work and where are you turning those in on the google drive in your own folder Okay, guys, so if you don't have any further questions, so I'm going to stop right now. And, you know, you guys can have some uh, time to yourself now. <laughs> and uh, be safe. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. All right, sounds good. Take care. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks.